Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mary McKenna, CEO and founder of Tour America and Cruise Holidays. Mary McKenna, CEO and founder of Tour America and Cruise Holidays, has been working in the travel sector for over 30 years. Having started out in the airline and travel agency business, Mary decided in 1995 it was time to make a go of it herself, setting up Tour America and later Cruise Holidays. Mary's business has survived multiple unforeseen challenges, including the aftermath of the 9-11 attack, and most recently, the global pandemic. Despite all of that, Tour America and Cruise Holidays continue to thrive. When I think back to being a child, um, I actually go back to school and I think uh, actually I didn't do terribly well in school. And I didn't really like school. I, I absolutely love sport and uh, I found a real passion for hockey and playing uh, sports and football with my brother, my older brother. And I, I didn't go to college. Uh, I, I wanted to get a job. Um, and I had a great interest in travel uh, because my, my father actually worked in travel. He was an incredible uh, worker and he worked seven days a week. It was the respect he showed for his staff. I think I've taken that in, in my career going forward. So my first career actually was in the airline business. I worked with Northwest Airlines down in Shannon Airport. And then I started work with a, a charter airline called Club Air. And after that, my uncle asked me to go and work in his company, which was American Holidays at the time. And I went there for six years. I went in as the marketing manager, first of all, and then uh, became the office manager. And what happened was that um, the company was actually sold uh, to a UK company. And, and this was my opportunity. I kind of thought I'd love to do my own thing. Now, here's the thing, though. I'd love to do my own thing, but you know, Mary doesn't have any money and has never run a business before. Um, but, you know, that's what I thought and that's what I wanted. Um, so this opportunity, and I, I suppose now when I look back, timing is so important. Uh, he was selling the business. Uh, I wanted to leave. I wanted to start a business. And the opportunity was just amazing at that time because what happened was this UK company that he sold to were going to drop some of our suppliers. So what I did is I rang all these suppliers and I said, look, I know you've dealt with this company, but they've kind of got rid of you now. Um, is there any chance you could give me really good rates, lower rates than you previously gave for two years? And I said, I need two years because I need to go into the marketplace with good value. I said, I'm an Irish business. Uh, it's going to be called Tour America. Um, I'm well known and I think we'll do very well. And, and they absolutely said, OK. So when I started, we had all secondhand furniture, we're in Eden Key. Uh, the photocopier was the um, lunch desk, people ate their lunch on it. And uh, I had three staff that I had worked with previously who were on 50 pounds a week. And I said, look, once we do well, I'll take care of you. And, and we did. Someone said to me when I started business, uh, you don't make money for the first three years. And I said, well, who decided that? Who made up that rule? And uh, in our first year of business, we turned over three million pounds and we made a profit of 69,000 pounds in the first year. And I suppose that was, you know, understanding the margin, understanding net profits, understanding overhead. So in very simple terms, I ran a business lean and made sure what came in and made sure I didn't spend on, on expenses more than I got in. Very simple and it worked. So it was a, a very interesting journey about the growth of the business. And I, I think what happened, you know, the first year we turned over three million in turnover. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, we're kind of growing, growing. We moved premises. We went to Abbey Street. 
We went from three people to 43 people. And the business was growing and growing and growing. And in particular, if you think about those, those times, everything that we were selling were quite complex. Like if someone was going to Orlando, they might need Disney Pass, Universal Pass, a car. They might have three or four different hotels. They might be going to three or four di different destinations. So that's where we kind of took the hassle out of travel. And the business was growing. So I thought that's what, what happens. You just grow and grow, grow and grow. And a slight bit of complacency definitely came in when I look back now, I can actually look at myself and say, definitely you took your eye off the ball. You weren't innovating in the, in the same way you were or um, you know, coming up with new ideas. So what happened actually to the business um, was September the 11th. We had no phones ringing. We had nobody booking any holidays. Everybody was canceling their holidays. I had 43 staff working with us and, um, you know, I, I didn't think I could pay the payroll uh, for the next two or three months. And I had to let go of 11 staff. And, and probably to this day, that was the worst thing I ever had to do. I had to meet each and every one of them individually say, I am so sorry, you're a great staff member. I actually was bawling, crying to every single one and say, and I'm sorry, I have to let you go. And I went into a place of, you know, really doubting myself and what's going on and, um, you know, why is this not happening? I'm working very hard. And I felt a bit sorry for myself. And then, uh, you know, I just went, get yourself together, get your act together. So all these cruise offers coming into the office, and I said, let's start cruise holidays. And we registered cruiseholidays.ie, took back the staff we had let go, said, you can go into selling cruises. That business alone turned over six million and it was incredible. 2004, it was a Saturday morning, the 24th of January. I'm at the back of the office, gone in to collect flyers for a show, the Holiday World show that was going on. And uh, my office window, I could see the cars parked and I saw an old lady trying to move her car. And I said, I'd go out and move my car. And I got hit by a Jeep and run over by a Jeep um, one o'clock on Saturday. And uh, I broke all my ribs and uh, punctured both my lungs, fractured my pelvis and hip. And the Jeep had to drive off me. And, and I was given a 50-50 chance of survival. And I remember, being on those cobblestones, normally it's rats that are running around, and having this, uh, the, these moments of thoughts going through my head saying, um, oh, I'm going to die first of all, I'm going to, am I going to go through terrible pain? And then just thinking, you know, um, if, if I had died, I had a great life. And uh, just I remember that thought coming in. I was very bad and I was brought to hospital and I was in hospital for a long time. And uh, they, they said to me in hospital, most people would have died of their injuries, but because I didn't put any pressure on my heart and stayed calm, that that saved my life. And, and that incident that happened did change my life uh, completely. Um, I don't work seven days a week anymore. And, and, and it was the most probably uh, incredible thing that happened to me because I have a complete um, appreciation for life and everything about it. And it changed my whole business world as well. I did get back to work six weeks later on crutches uh, to sign off our accounts and I am doing fantastic. So I got over it, but it certainly was a life changing, you know, incident for me and, and the business. The business continued to grow and actually uh, it, it, it had its best year ever in 2019. So we kind of started at 3 million, went up and in 2019 we turned over 22 million best year profits. Um, we were Deloitte best managed company. I was incredibly lucky in 2012 working with Enterprise Ireland um, that I went on the leadership for growth course in IMD in Switzerland. I was the only female with 27 guys and uh, it was quite incredible. We spent three weeks in Switzerland uh, together and I think what I took out of it all was the importance of emotional intelligence, the importance of understanding people's emotions, reading them, 
you know, I'm 26 years in business and I look back, we started in 1995, October 1995. Most of the people who started with me are still with me. Um, so they've grown with the business as well. And I'm really proud to say we've developed them as a company and, you know, touched into what would they, what's important to them and get that balance right as well. And I, I probably have seen people grow and mature, in, including myself with the business over time. Um, and that's been a really important journey as well for Tour America. And even over COVID, um, we had to give, we had to work for two years with no income coming in and we had to continue working like, unlike any other industry, not even the pubs. And at the very beginning, when I stood on the 20th of March and had to close all my offices in front of all my staff, I said two things to them. I said, we'll do the right thing for the customer. And I said, I will make sure you're all okay. Now, I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't know whether it was going to be two weeks or three weeks. And when I say the right thing for the customer, uh, we were the first company that did full refunds for our customer, gave back whatever we had to do, the right thing. We were there for the customers, talking to the customers. And you see how that comes back. It's a bit like doing the right thing, a good thing. They all book with us and they come back and say, thank you. Um, and there is a lot of goodwill. Okay, some people mightn't do it, but you know something? That's what I believe in, doing the right thing. I'm very proud of the fact that Tour America, to me, represents a brand that is about trust, that we put the customer first and took care of our staff. What's very interesting about ego is everybody has an ego, um, but I think you need to be very aware of your ego. And uh, from what I've seen in the business world, uh, ego can destroy, destroy people, destroy businesses. It gets in the way, is what I think. It gets in the way of judgment. And it's quite interesting. I've been, I was in the finalist of the EY of the Entrepreneur of the Year, which I just have to say, by the way, it was the only award I really always wanted because I wanted to be recognized for being an entrepreneur. Is that an ego? I'm sure it is. Um, and actually, the reason I wanted that was I wanted to be with my tribe because these are people that think like most are very grounded and actually when you look at the entrepreneur of the year program and you meet the alumni group i have to say they're all incredibly grounded and i think if you asked any one of them about ego they would all have a very strong opinion on ego and you know it's about treating every single person with respect and you know what you see in life is the person who is nice to everyone the a uh, person in the restaurant, the receptionist, the cleaning staff. I think that tells you a lot about people. And they're the people that I want. I want the consistency of they're just nice and good people. Um, and I think that's really important in business as well. So my favorite trip of the whole year is the CEO retreat uh, with the EY uh, finalists every year. I just love it. I, I don't know whether it's a different bubble of a world, but it's my world where I go away, I come back, I'm energized. I have these conversations with like-minded people, but they're all so nice and grounded. And you know what's the most amazing thing about this group? How they help each other. And I am actually so proud and delighted to be part of it. And, and I'm learning every time I go on it, I come away re-energized, having learned something and have a whole bunch of heroes that I really look up to. I think I become an innovator when I'm put in a situation where things aren't going right. But when I think of COVID, you know, we started Zoom holidays, Zoom travel, um, we contacted Enterprise Ireland and said, okay, where can we take our business for the future? And we've just uh, launched touramerica.co.uk uh, in conjunction with Enterprise Ireland. And I'm really looking forward to where, where that is going to bring the business. So there's a great opportunity to take a business model that we have in Ireland that works well. It's very niche, very much based on customer service, five star, top end stuff, and, and bring that to a different marketplace. I also want to talk about the importance of technology in our business. Digital marketing and the digital platform was the best thing that ever happened to America because at the beginning when we were starting, traditionally you'd be matching people on press advertising 
And you were up against these companies that had bases in Germany and the States, then they were just throwing millions at marketing. And we couldn't throw millions at marketing. And then digital marketing comes along, and now it's a level playing field. And you know what? Once it's a level playing field, we can be at the best. Even during COVID, I would do a video every single week that we'd use to communicate to consumers, communicate to staff, to suppliers. Over 26 years, I would always say to the team, you know, the only thing I can tell you for sure is that we're going to change. We're going to change. And actually, I have to say, most people hate change. They don't like it. And it's the only thing I know that has to go on continuously is change. What you did yesterday might not work tomorrow and the ability to move fast. So I would always say to my team, you know, it's what you take with information. It's not what you have, information is about knowledge, is, but it's how fast can you take that information and do something with it. A lot of people could have done what I did. Uh, they mightn't have had the courage, which I said is very important, I think. But also I had a belief. I actually went and did something. A lot of people don't take action. And um, the past does not equal the future unless you decide to live there. So the only thing we know is change, keep growing, keep developing, keep making yourself a better person. My father passed away in September 1989 and uh, he, he definitely was my inspiration. He was a wonderful, wonderful dad. And I, I think back to that day when he went into hospital, into the Black Rock Clinic, he was a complete and utter workaholic. And I, I feel that was about his family. It was, you know, really to provide for his family in a time, you know, the 70s, 80s was not an easy time in Ireland and everybody worked very hard. But he would be working every day, every single day. And, uh, you know, he he didn't have time to go to hockey games or soccer games or whatever. I think, you know, here was a great provider who was brilliant at his business, a brilliant parent. Um, but he was quite stressed going into hospital. And I think it's a really important thing to realize that life and uh, you can have a business, but the balance in life is really important. And I don't want to be one of those people working seven days a week. I want to stay fit. I have changed my whole entire life um, because of my accident. Um, <clears throat> I still have a very bad back injury. I'm actually, they can't believe I can walk. Um, my surgeon says, you know, or anybody who sees my x-ray thinks I should be bedridden. Um, but I'm not that type of person. I always believe in fighting everything. So every single day of my life, I have to lift 20 kilos of weight and work on glutes and spend an hour in a gym lifting weights doing 20 full press ups and uh, it's about discipline and it's about, I actually want to stay well. I have a mindset, I'm not listening to anyone. I think, you know, I'm going to enjoy life. Um, and that's been a very important uh, part for me is your mindset. And I think COVID has changed so many people and, and, and I want to talk about how we've changed in Tour America as well. Um, you know, we did all our calls, well actually, the snow happened two years ago, so we had to set people up from home. That actually ended up being a blessing in disguise when COVID happened because we were able to then move everybody to a remote environment. But when I listened to my team and we're, we're doing business, we're doing it on Zoom, we set up Zoom holidays, they were saying they were happy to work from home. They wanted to work from home. They wanted a more of a work-life balance. Some of them lived in our way, some of them lived in Uri. That maybe this can work. Maybe this is about now having real flexibility where you get it right. You get it right for the customer, you get it right for the staff. And to listen and to see, okay, some people might want to work in an office that we can accommodate that. Um, but that's been the biggest change as well, to see how everybody's now looked at their lives and the importance of their family and time with their family. How can we as a business accommodate this and change? And even personally for me, I found um, I got a dog over COVID and so I was walking the dog a lot. Um, the importance of making sure that you eat well, that you mind yourself. Um, and I think what I found was a balance. I'm now working from home. I love working from home that you can do just as well. And you can find a balance in life 
and it does work it doesn't matter you know you don't have to work seven days a week I think when you start you do but it is really important to make sure you don't miss out on the most important times in life as well that is my personal advice <laughs>